It's a Thursday, March 31st, and it's time for your Bobby List today morning news update. A new liquor license regime is set to go into effect on Friday. The new system promises to cut the wait time for licenses and offer seasonal licenses, as well as raise the minimum age for purchasing alcohol from 16 to 18. Minister of Energy and Business Development Kerry Simmons made the disclosure on Wednesday as he discussed the pending changes to take effect under the Liquor Licenses Act 2021. Old system, which we are doing away with from the 1st of April, um, there are some criminal measures which we are putting to an end so that you f can be fined in the, in the magistrate's court uh, $2,500 as a fine. You can be subject to three months imprisonment. Um, and we do not feel that that is an appropriate way to treat to a legitimate commercial activity in this day and age. Um, so that will come to an end as well. In fact, quite frankly, if I could say so as minister responsible for business development, to tell some small people in Barbados in the context of a pandemic, for example, that you face a fine of $2,500 maybe to put that business in such peril today as it faces the prospect of closure. And, and, and I'm being very real about that, so that we, we have to do away with that, uh, uh, that approach. We are at a stage now where we're talking about facilitating growth. We're talking about making sure that this new regime is able to um, provide entertainment licenses so as to end the agony of those folks who, for example, were forced under the old system to go on a weekly basis to renew a liquor license. Under the new regime, licenses are also available to business owners wanting to sell liquor in frequent entertainment areas or during a seasonal activities. The Council of Substance Abuse has, according to my information, perhaps now for the last 20, 30 years, been trying to get um, governments successively in Barbados to reset the legal age at which we can sell alcohol. Um, when this effectively comes into when this legislation comes into effect on Friday, um, the age of, of sale of alcohol, the age of consumption of alcohol by minors will now be 18 years of age. Um, and so gone forever, we hope, are the days where 16-year-olds will be sent to the shop to procure alcohol or will be employed in the business of, of um, the sale of alcohol or be associated with either the consumption or sale of alcohol legally. Um, and that effectively now puts that, that tortured period of Barbados' history to rest um, as we join the rest of the world in trying to treat our young people in the way that they should be treated. So the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados has identified what it describes as a crisis in labor in which workers' representatives are being excluded from the Senate and the statutory boards, resulting in a range of key workers' issues apparently being placed on the back burner. President of the Congress, Edwin O'Neill, told reporters that it is the first time since 1976 that the Senate was void of labor representation. So I find it worrisome that at the launch of the Republic, there is no trade unionist in the Senate. And Edwin O'Neill is making this statement not for his own interest, but in an effort to sensitize Barbadians to the realities of what we have to be ever vigilant about. When it suits leaders, they speak of the progress that this country has made in, in working towards a just and equitable society, um, an egalitarian society, and are quick to point out that it has been because of the contributions of labor. Now at a critical juncture, when Barbados starts out on its own as a parliamentary republic, there is no presence of a labor representative in the Senate. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear.
Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Dale Marshall, has called for a paper on measures to remedy certain deficiencies in the police ranks. It came as he addressed the issue of the service's 278 vacancies in the ranks during Wednesday's opening ceremony of the Barbados Police Services Annual Grand Conference 2022 held at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center. The service is legally authorized to have 1,530 officers. And I am advised that in our case at home, a significant number of applicants are burdened by some issues, and I think, Commissioner, you mentioned this moments ago, that disqualify them for police service. And further, that the best qualified candidates would often rather take their skills elsewhere, mostly to the private sector. It's also worthy of note that the number of female applicants significantly outnumber males. As to the optimal number for police service, internationally this is determined by a number of factors, even though they're not universally agreed on. Should it be determined by our frame rate? Should it depend on the demand for services demanded by our communities or by a combination of these variables? Should the various cutting edge tasks performed by officers be taken into account? What about the allocation of time away from work to combat fatigue? Or time away from work to facilitate training? These are all matters that require your urgent attention. And I'm asking that you send me a paper outlining these issues as you see them and also possible responses. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Morbi, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To news from the region, the Grenada government has denied reports that it was appealing a high court ruling that could result in it having to pay a significant amount of money to public servants who were disqualified from receiving a pension following the enforcement of the Pension Disqualification Act in 1983. We get more in this report from GBN News. Reports that the government of Grenada has decided to appeal a high court ruling of March 29th 2022 against the state of Grenada on the pension issue is a contemporary misrepresentation. That's the Labour Minister for Legal Affairs, Kendra Matthew and Stewart, attached to reports that government is appealing a high court judgment on the pension issue. Representatives of the government are yet to discuss at cabinet or legal levels, much less to come up with a decision on what its reaction should be on this matter. As it stands right now, the government awaits the written judgment and a full legal briefing. Any attempted representation of the government's reaction is therefore premature and largely speculative, if not in some instances mischievous. Minister Matuin Stewart said government's only firm decision taken in the 24 hours since the ruling is to declare its intention to invite the trade unions to have a discussion on the latest developments. The government is completely committed to the cause of all workers. Two, while the matter is one that has been inherited by this and previous governments, there has never been a lack of commitment by at least this current government to find a lasting and fair solution. Three, everyone must be cognizant that no government, no or in the, in the immediate future, will be able to find immediately the over $1 billion required without bankrupting the entire society. 
On the international front, the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adamon Gabriesus, has given the latest update on the COVID-19 pandemic. He said based on what health officials now know, the most likely scenario is that the virus continues to evolve. But he said the severity of the disease it causes reduces over time as immunity increases due to vaccination and infection. Periodic spikes in cases and deaths may occur as immunity wanes, uh, which may require periodic boosting for vulnerable populations. In the best case scenario, we may see less severe variants emerge and boosters or new formulations of vaccines won't be necessary. In the worst case scenario, a more virulent and highly transmissible variant emerges against this new threat, people's protection against severe disease and deaths, either from prior vaccination or infection, will wane rapidly. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.